Welcome to the Integrated Procedure Team. We are Procedure Nurse Specialists who specialise in the insertion of central venous access devices. Together with our Procedure Team assistants, we aim to deliver outstanding care. This video has been produced to supplement the information provided in the Care of Your Central Venous Catheter booklet. It aims to answer many of the questions you may have about your procedure and living with a central line. The line you are having inserted is commonly called a Hickman line. What is a central line? A central line is a thin, hollow plastic tube with an opening at both ends. It has a small cuff which sits just under the skin and knits into the tissues to anchor the line into place and prevent it from falling out. This is the clamp. It stays closed when the line is not in use and open when the treatment is attached to the line. When the clamp is closed, it must remain on the reinforced area, clearly marked clamp here. Most patients have a single lumen line with one end, although depending upon treatment, some patients require a dual lumen line with two ends. What the line is used for. The usual reason for having a central line is to be able to receive anti-cancer therapies intravenously via the line. The line can also be used for taking blood tests. How it is inserted. The procedure is performed on a bed in the integrated procedures unit by a procedure nurse specialist. We clean your skin with an antibacterial solution and a sterile sheet will cover you to prevent infection when inserting the line. Local anaesthetic is used to numb the area completely. This may sting for a short time and on rare occasions could make you feel drowsy. The vein is located at the base of the neck using an ultrasound machine and after the local anaesthetic you should only be aware of some pushing and pressure. The procedure takes approximately 20 to 30 minutes to complete. What to expect after the procedure? Once the line is in, you will have approximately 6 inches of line showing outside of the chest wall. It may feel slightly bruised and sore for a few days once the local anaesthetic has worn off. Take regular pain relief if required until this settles. It will be looped and covered with a waterproof dressing to keep it secure. Two stitches will be in place, one at the base of the neck called the insertion site and one on the chest wall called the exit site. These stitches will be removed by your district nurse. The top stitch after seven days and the stitch at the exit site after three weeks once the cuff has firmly knitted into place. For the first three weeks until the exit site stitch is removed, a clear waterproof dressing must be used to cover the line. This will be changed by your district nurse on a weekly basis. After both stitches have been removed, a dressing is no longer required. However, we do recommend that the line is kept in a loop position using surgical tape. This should prevent the line being pulled out if it is caught or tugged. The line needs to be flushed every seven days when not in use to prevent it from blocking. Your chemotherapy nurse will refer you to your district nurse who will care for your line when at home. When you visit the hospital, the chemotherapy or ward nurses will care for your line. Please ensure that people caring for the line, taking blood samples, doing the weekly flush or giving treatment thoroughly wash their hands before handling your line and are competent in the care of it. If you have any concerns, please do not hesitate to contact us. Risks of the procedure. Insertion of a central line using ultrasound is a very low risk procedure. Lots of people have lines inserted by the procedure team at the Christie every day without any problems. But in order for you to fully consent, we do have to tell you about the small risks involved. Infection. When having chemotherapy, the body's defences are lowered, making you more at risk of infection. Signs of line infection can include redness or oozing around the site or a raised temperature above 37.5 degrees. Please monitor your line and temperature closely. We advise that you take your temperature every day to help identify any signs of infection. If you notice any signs of early infection or experience shivers or shakes, particularly after the line has been used, please contact the chemotherapy hotline immediately. This line is staffed 24 hours a day by nurse practitioners. Lung puncture. If the needle were to accidentally puncture the lung during the procedure, the lung may deflate and you would need to stay in hospital for at least overnight for monitoring. 
If the lung deflated significantly, doctors may decide to insert a tube to allow the lung to reinflate. This is an extremely small risk of less than 1 in 13,000 people, so please do not worry too much. Puncture of the artery. Again, this is an extremely small risk. If the needle were to accidentally puncture the artery, some bleeding may occur. We would apply pressure to the area and monitor you for a short time afterwards. It is for this reason that we take blood tests before the procedure to ensure that your blood is clotting normally. The use of ultrasound allows us to clearly see both the vein and the artery. This minimises any risk of accidental puncture to your artery. Adjustment. ECG technology is usually used to confirm that the line tip is left at optimal position. Sometimes a chest x-ray is required if ECG unsuitable. Very occasionally when the line is x-rayed after the procedure, the tip of the line is sitting in an incorrect vein or maybe slightly too long or too short. If this were to occur, the line would require slight adjustment before it can be used. Clot formation. As the line is a foreign body sitting within your vein, there is a small chance that a clot could form within that vein. We ask that you look out for any pain or swelling on the arm or the neck on the side of your line or any mottling or discoloration of the skin. Please report to us anything that seems unusual. We would arrange for an ultrasound examination to check for any signs of a clot and remove the line immediately if there was. Line blocked or not bleeding back. Occasionally your line may become blocked. Flushing on a weekly basis is very important and usually prevents this from happening. Should your line become blocked, we have various techniques to enable us to unblock your line. If your line suddenly does not bleed back but flushes freely, it may require a medication down the line to dissolve a protein layer which can occasionally form at the end of it. There are further rare complications that may occur. Your specialist nurse will discuss these with you as appropriate. Important things to remember. Do ensure that your line is clamped when not in use. Ensure your line is flushed on a weekly basis. Keep your line covered with a waterproof dressing, changed weekly for the first three weeks. Always keep your line looped and secured with tape. Continue to wear your seatbelt whilst in a car. Ensure that anyone accessing your line has washed their hands thoroughly and is properly trained. Inform your specialist nurse if you would like a member of staff to chaperone. Return to us once your treatment is complete and we will remove your line. Please do not tug on your line, swim or have a deep bath. Take the bung off the end of your line. Undertake excessive sports. Wear necklaces with a line in. What happens when your treatment has finished? Once your treatment has finished, your doctor will refer you back to the procedure team to have your line removed. This is a quick procedure involving a small amount of local anaesthetic placed around the cuffed area of the line. You may feel a slight tugging sensation. A dissolvable stitch will be placed and covered with a waterproof dressing. This dressing will be removed after seven days. We hope that this has answered some of your questions about having a central line. A procedure nurse specialist will speak to you on an individual basis prior to your procedure and will address any further questions or concerns you may have. Please keep your information booklets containing the procedure team telephone number for reference and in case you need to contact us.